So I'm just going to go grab my carrots. My carrots. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm Benjamina and I'm super excited to share with you my roasted carrot and harissa galette, a recipe for my new cookbook, A Good Day to Bake. The first thing I'm going to do is grate some cheddar and this is going to get incorporated into our pastry for lots of extra flavour. Try and get something like as sharp and as strong as possible and this is going to just give a really nice flavour for our crust. This recipe is for a savoury galette. It's rustic, it's free form. You just roll it out, fill it with whatever you want and you're good to go. So cheddar is grated and onto the pastry. I'm using a mix of 50-50 plain flour and wholemeal flour. And that's just for flavour. I think the earthiness of whole wheat flour really works well with carrots. So just 50-50 mix. If you're not keen on whole wheat, you can just use plain. That's totally fine. So mix them both together in the bowl. And I've got a little bit of salt going in. So flour's in the bowl and I'm going to go in with my cold cubed butter. When we're doing pastry, butter always needs to be cold. And then all I'm going to do now is just get in with my fingertips and start squishing the butter and rubbing it into the flour to coat it evenly. So rubbing this in and getting to this consistency will take a few minutes, but like don't wash it. Relax, this is supposed to be relaxing baking, so take your time, don't rush. It will take about three, four minutes, maybe more, and that's fine. Once you're done, this is the kind of consistency that you're looking for. Like the lumps of butter aren't as big as when we were making rough puff pastry for our sausage rolls, but you still want a few flecks of butter in there, and this is gonna help make it a little bit flaky. So that's done and now just go straight in with all of that cheese that we grated. And then just give it a good mix to incorporate everything. Now we're gonna go in with our cold water. And you don't want to pour all of this in at once. We probably need about six or seven tablespoons. So start with a little bit and then add more as you go. Start with that. And then I'm just mixing with a table knife. We're not making bread. We don't need to overwork this. So I've added in most of my water and you can see it's starting to get a little clumpy. And so we're very nearly there. What I'm going to do now is just go in with my hands and start bringing it together in one mass and this is also a good way to feel if it's really dry at the bottom or if it's a little bit too wet so in the first episode we made a rough puff and in that um, one of the most important things was incorporating the layers with all the folding that we did with this pastry it's more of just a regular flaky pastry we're not folding anything into each other but we're still going to get some of that buttery crumbliness pastry has come together into one big mass and it's not super super sticky so it looks like the right consistency and all I'm going to do now is just turn it out onto my surface and then I'm not going to knead this like I'm doing bread just take it easy relax and give it a few squeezes and turns and then just collect any stray bits of cheese that trying to escape. And then all I'm gonna do is pat it into a thick disc like that. I'm gonna wrap this in cling film and chill it for about an hour, an hour and a half, just until it's nice and firm and it's had time to rest. Our pastry is just chilling away in the fridge and in the meantime, I'm gonna get started on the filling. I've got a whole bunch of carrots here and I'm using rainbow carrots um, or heritage carrots because I just absolutely love the color. You've got kind of yellowy ones, purple ones, orange ones, and this one is even a bit pinky. Um, so I think they just look absolutely beautiful. But of course, you can just use regular old carrots. They're still gonna taste fantastic. So I'm just gonna start by peeling them get off some of that skin. I think if you just 
take time in the processes that you're doing, it's a lot more enjoyable than just focusing on the end result. So take your time with it, it's fun, it's relaxing, and just enjoy whatever you create. All I'm gonna do now is just slice my carrots in half. If they're a little bit bigger, like this guy here, what I'm gonna do is cut it in half and then cut it again into quarters, just so they kind of cook at about the same speed. Right, so everything goes into my bowl. If you've got extra long ones like this, then just snap it in half. And now all I'm gonna do is add in my harissa paste. And this is essentially like chili paste made from red peppers and chilies. And this version's got a bit of rose water in as well, which is nice and fragrant. And it adds a really good kick. If you're not a big chili person, then by all means add a little bit less. And if you like things very, very hot, add a little bit more. And in with some honey for a little bit of sweetness and some salt for seasoning. Don't forget your seasoning. I'm just gonna go in with my hands. You can use a spoon, but it's just fun to bake with your hands. So go in and give it a good mix and just make sure that all the carrots are like evenly coated and glossy and shiny. And I'm just gonna transfer them to my baking sheet and just make sure they're not overlapping. We want them to roast evenly. If I was making a galette with say like tomatoes or courgettes or other veg that isn't like as firm as carrots, you probably wouldn't need to roast them first, but um, we need the carrots to soften a little bit and roasted carrots do taste so much better when they've had a bit of time in the oven, so. These are gonna bake in the oven at 425 degrees Fahrenheit or 220 degrees Celsius for about 25 to 30 minutes. And you're gonna turn them once halfway just until they're fork soft. We're gonna bake them again when we assemble our galette, but this is just to get them nice and roasty and crispy and get all that harissa and honey flavor seeped into the carrots for lots and lots of flavor. Carrots are roasting away, sizzling away in the oven, and I'm just gonna do the last little bit of the filling, which is gonna go on the base of our galette, and then the carrots will go on top. So I've just got a little bit of fresh thyme from my thyme plant, and I'm gonna roughly chop it up. I'm using about two to three sprigs, but if you are a big thyme lover, then please use double the amount if you really want to. So I'm just gonna roughly chop it up. So very roughly chopped, just to break it up a little bit. And then it's gonna go into mascarpone. And all you need to do at this point is just give it a good mix so it's nice and smooth and silky. And mascarpone is just a very simple Italian soft cheese and it works really well in both sweet and savory, but I kind of like it just to mellow out some of that heat from the harissa carrots. So just a thin layer on the bottom is enough to give kind of a creamy texture. So that's our filling done, pastry done, carrots are roasting away in the oven. All that's left is for you to like and subscribe below to get more Food 52 content. So my pastry is properly chilled. I'm gonna unwrap it. Just lightly floured my surface, nothing too crazy. We just need a little bit so it doesn't stick to our mat. And a little bit on top and on the molding pin. So you're gonna start from the center of your dough and slowly go back and forth, giving it about a quarter turn every roll or so, just to give us a rough circle. The thing about galettes is they're actually better the more rustic they look. So I'm aiming for a circle, but if it's a bit wonky, it's actually better. So that's what we're going for here. 
So give it another quarter turn, back and forth. If it feels like it's sticking a little bit, just add a bit more flour underneath. That looks about right. Size wise, it's just roughly 14 inches wide, give or take. And again, don't worry about all these jaggedy edges. It's actually what we want. Cool, so I'm gonna roll it over. And then unroll it on here. And this just makes it so much more easy to assemble. Because from experience, if you assemble your galettes on this mat, it's going to be a nightmare to transfer. So we do it now. So that's on our tray. We've got our mascarpone filling. That's going to go on the base. So just spoon it on to the center. And it's quite a little palette knife and I'm gonna evenly spread this on the base. So when you're spreading this on, just leave about like an inch border all around the edge because this is the bit that we're gonna fold over on top of our carrots. Okay, so filling is on. Now we are going to assemble our beautiful roasted carrots on top. So I'm just gonna go grab my carrots. So my carrots are all roasted and they've shrunk a little bit, but they still look absolutely delicious. You've got some nice crispy edges on there and they just look fabulous. So now they go right on top. Uh, depending on your personality type, you might want to lay them out very neatly. You might want to do an ombre effect or you might just want to dump them all in and go random. It's completely up to you. I think I'm going to go random. So you literally just lay them on top. Keep it concentrated in the middle area because don't forget we're going to fold up our edges around it and place them on top like that. And don't worry if they overlap, just make sure a lot of the base is covered. So I've put my carrots on top and all we need to do now is start folding. Don't panic about this bit. Honestly, it's very, very, very simple. So just start from one side and you're just gonna literally fold it over the carrots and then work your way around and you're gonna have a little pleat on that side and just let it naturally fall into itself and then continue folding. Give a tray little turn and you're just gonna do this all the way around. You're just folding it over so you're going to encase all your carrots and your filling to make a tart. And the last one. And don't be afraid to like just undo a couple of them and redo if you don't like the way it looks until we have a very cute galette. And it's already so pretty and it's not even cooked yet. So that's a good sign. All we need to do now is give it an egg wash, add some more cheese and then let it bake. So I've got one beaten egg and I'm just gonna go over the crust. This is gonna give it a beautiful golden color. Make it nice and crisp. And then last thing we need to do is add more cheese because cheese is very good. So I've got some Parmesan here, a little micro plane, and I'm just gonna grate it all along the crust just for an extra hit of cheese, because why not? So that is about done. I could probably use this whole block of cheese, but I'm going to restrain myself. And this is ready to bake in the oven at 425 degrees Fahrenheit or 220 degrees Celsius for about 40 to 45 minutes. And you'll know it's done when the crust is nice, deep brown and it's gonna be golden and crisp and it's gonna be bubbly and delicious and smell wonderful. So I'm just about to pop this in the oven and I will be back when it's done. Oh. 
I'm really excited to be able to be here and share some of my recipes with the Food52 audience. I've been a fan for many, many years, following on Instagram and just seeing all the wonderful things that are created. So yeah, it's a real joy to be a part of this video. Our roasted carrot galette is out of the oven and I've let it cool for about 10 minutes and I've moved it to a wire rack to cool completely. And the last thing I'm gonna do is just add a bit more Parmesan and a few extra sprigs of thyme just to finish it off. And just a little bit of thyme for a pop of color. And you can eat this when it's still a little bit warm, which I like to do, um, but it's also good the next day when it's cold. So very versatile. Thank you so much for joining me as I made this roasted carrot and harissa galette. I hope you guys get baking and make this too. For more recipes and videos from Food52, check them out all over here. And if you want some more of my recipes, you can get them in my new cookbook, The Good Day to Bake, available everywhere.